Welcome PML fans, I'm your admin Joe here, and we are bringing you the Pokemon Masters 2022 YouTube Draft Class Recap, and with me I have Jaden and Stuart who are analysts for PML. Yo, how's it going? They certainly aren't analyzers, um, but uh, they're going to go ahead and uh, do all the talking for me today, and uh, they're going to go ahead and grade the teams. And I will post the uh, final scores at the very end. And let's go ahead and get started with the first team. Yeah, well, we want a really tight ship here. We're keeping it very impartial and very independent. Um, we don't participate in YouTube drafts because we are not, or I can't speak for Stuart, but I'm not able to. Um, but I can yeah, provide either. some insights into how these things might um, operate and how they're going to go in this in the league. Um, so first off, we have Team Tempest run by Kiwi, and they've drafted Cinderace, Rotom Wash, Tangrowth, Noivern, Claydol, Galarian Stunfisk, Robombi, Mianshao, Dusclops, and Galarian Darmanitan. Yeah, it's your... a pretty good team. Pretty good team first off, eh? Yeah, I think you know this will be a really um. I think it's part and parcel. Part and parcel being pick number one, you get the the top teams, you get the top picks, you get your. You get, yeah, really what you want. <laughs> yeah, um, I feel uh, like pick, pick one, you take Cinderace or Dragon Ball oh, in this also, kind of league. I uh, forgot to mention this little tidbit. We actually allowed the YouTubers to uh, draft out of order. So some people drafted Tier 2 first, some people drafted Tier 1 first. And so oh, that's first. cool. Uh, I feel, I nice. like that. A little more freedom on that end. There you go. Well, from the outset, I just want to say, like, it's a very fast and very it's a, it's designed to control speed. Like, this team is is this will win their games based on their speed tiers. Um, you can see that they've got very very quick Pokemon with Cinderace and Noivern. Um, they've got speed control with Frabombi with um, Sticky Webs, Dimantan Galar Galarian Dimantan is um, a natural scarfer and will fundamentally break things. They're certifiable. Smash of, of walls. Um, I think there's not gonna, he's not going to have too many problems in 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 fighting for a finals position. So, how do you feel about bulk? Bulk, I think it's. I mean, it's it's a good it's got good answers to bulk, but I think this is one of those offensive to or offensive teams where you don't really necessarily want a lot of bulk. You just want to be hitting hard and fast. You don't want to be yeah. you don't want to be in a, a drawn out battle. You want to be just winning games in like the first and 14, 15 turns. I mean the bulk they have is pretty good though, like Rotomosh, Tangrowth, Dusclops, Claydol, Stunfisk. I mean all you need is a couple of those and then four offensive mons every week and then you're home and home is basically depending on your opponent. Yep. No, I agree. Um and I think as well, like I think Kiwi's done a really good job at um, drafting Trick Room Pokemon so that the other their opponents can't have it. So Dustbuff is a really reliable yeah. Trick Room. He, he could run it defensively, and you know he, he, there is utility for Dustbuffs in the team. But even it's just picking Dustbuffs just so other people can't have it, you know, I think is a big boost for his speed, um, his speed game. So yeah, bulk I gave a seven, um, pretty much for the reasons described. It's not amazing, but it's also not rubbish by any means. It's what you want in this team, and I think it's good. Yeah, I gave a six, um, and I think because, like I said, like it's not the team isn't really. Designed, I don't think the team is really designed to be bulky. It's more designed to be more in that hyper offense, um, more mm -hmm. offensive to hyper offensive. And I think I think that's going to be part and parcel of the switch base league, like with the 20 minute timer, you're going to really want to finish those games off to get those three points rather than the 1.4 timer wins. It's a very, very good point. All right. Um, and so you mentioned uh, your speed tiers. I agree with those as well. Yeah. I think it's about, it's, it's, yep. fun. sorry, just try to compose myself a little That's bit. Right. Um, 
<laughs> having so many calls at once and having a stroke trying to get them all out. Um, it's about as good as it gets for a draft league. Like, there's arguable, like, there's, there's could be some, you know, there could be a more faster Pokemon in, like, those tier two um, slots um, without seeing what, what's actually in the tier two um, categories. I've got the document here, we can just have a quick look, but. You know, picking up things like you could have had Crobat or Chandelure or something as a as another fast option, um, but then you're sort of running out on the on the bulk. You're running very short on bulk as well. So yeah, well, that's just the, I can see the strategy being one fast, two slow, or one offensive, two defensive in the first three packs. That's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So no, it's not absolutely not. Um, for speed, I gave a nine. I gave an eight for speed. Um, I guess I should have given an extra point for webs. I didn't even think about that, even though Robombi's right there. But um, yeah, another another really good part of the team. Yeah, if they can keep webs up, um, and you know, Dusclops could be there for that spin blocking. You know, then that, I mean, that's, that's more of a more indicative of support, right? Um, mm. if, also, if they can spin block on, um, you know, <laughs> usual rapid spinners of Torkoal and um, the Hitmon family, you know. You're in with a good shout to keep those webs up, and I mean, really so many things. Up. Yeah, and so many things get pivot as well, like U turn and bolt switch. So definitely no issues there. Mm. Agreed. Um, All right, and feel... that moves us. Sorry, you go. I was going to say, how do you feel about the wall breaking? Yeah, once again, I um, went middle of the road, kind of with another eight. Um, other than, say, Cinderace, there's no, yeah, Cinderace is a manatee and just pick and stick, you just don't need to sit up, you just click buttons. Behind that, there's not a whole lot, really. You're going to be wearing stuff down with uh, leaf seed and toxic and stuff like that, or, you know, fast U-turns. But other than that, I don't see anything that goes, oh, no, that's going to set up two Dragon Dancers and smash me down. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do them... I went an eight as well, um, and I think only because um, I just think that without um, being able to, there's not many Dynamax options in um, in his like Cinderace and Darmanitan won't be able to Dynamax at all in, in this league, but in the Pokemon yeah. that can Dynamax, there's um, it's a little bit predictable. So Noivern is a little bit predictable, and it's it's fast, it's but it's frail, and if you pick it regularly, it's gonna. Yeah. It invites those four times weak ice attacks. Um, so, pretty much I mean, the same as me and Shell. You're just relying on it. Yeah, well, you also got um, me and Shell there. And if it can, um, if it can get set up in webs, and you know, get off a um, you know, a max airstring with um, help from acrobatics or bounce, it, and max knuckle, like that could be, that could also be really really handy for it, um, for um, Kiwi's team. I just, um, I'm not too sure whether um, <coughs> Noivo and Mian Shao will be able will be in, will be able to do enough to, you know, pick like the yeah. Dynamax and really just punish teams by clicking those buttons. I, I like to. I think I mean, Shell with Life Orb and yeah. Noivo and with Life Orb are both very good. So, I think so far, I think it's probably going to. I think I think it's good, there's a good chance that they, they will be able to do well. Yeah, I did, you could definitely make a case for, you know, perhaps trading in a specialist Dynamaxer in the lower tiers, but, you know, give it a few weeks, not even in my right house, you never know. Get it in at the right time, it's so fast. It's just that it's, I think it's a lot weaker than a lot of people think. That's yeah. why a lot of the times, a lot of the times it runs choice specs because it doesn't have the power behind it, but then, of course, you have to run track and media and that to do any damage, so... You don't want to be going into your Dynamax already minus two. So it'd be interesting to see what gets done in that respect. And the big issue with Noivern as well is it doesn't get any access to Max Zoo, so it can't even patch its special attack um, yeah. in the Dynamax state. So um, I'd like to see Noivern do well. I, I've got a soft spot for Noivern. I've, um, I've done particularly well with Noivern before. Um, again, with, with spec sets, but I also take your point that Draco Meteors are, are powerful, yeah, but, then, then, but then they're not. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, overall, I think good, good, good wall breaking, um, eight out of 10. 
um, maybe needs a, maybe needs a bit of tinkering to get a higher higher grade overall, but I think good. Yeah, um, man, I, I got some, the the synergy was once again pretty good. Like um, the holes that you can see, you can patch up. Um, you know, Fairy Dragon Steel Core, yeah, it's a little bit near. Yeah. But you can't have it all, and I think that, um, you know, as far as lower tier dragons go, you could do Western Weaver, and as far as lower tier fairies go, you could do Western than Robombi. So can't argue with those picks really. No, um, I went seven for synergy, seven for synergy. Yeah, same for me, and um, I think as well because like they got, they got he's got good cover. Well, he's got good cover. Um, you know, if you look at Cinderace, you can. See that he can switch into Rotom Wash, Tangrowth, Noivern, Claydol. Like four options immediately come to mind to, to avoid an earthquake. Um, if you've got a rock type in front of you, you can see you can go, you know, you can jump into Tangrowth, or you can jump into Claydol. You can, um, if you've got Dalmanitan out and you don't like the, like, don't like the matchup, you can switch into Dust Blobs, you can switch into um, Rotom Wash. Like there's, there's options there to be able to switch around. So I think he's got good synergy. Yes, and so that gives me a grand total of 38 for 10 Tempest. Pick one. Mm-hmm. 35 for me. What was yours? 38. 38. Oh, 8, 6, 9, 7, 7, yeah. Yep, yeah, 35 and 38. Joe, you're, you're good with quick maths, mate? Sorry? <laughs> you good with quick maths? What's the, what's the final score for this one? What was the number? 35 and 38. 35 and 38. 35 and 38. 43 plus 30. 73. 73. 73. There we go. 73 out of a possible 100. <laughs> Beautiful. Now you, get to talk about the, now you get to talk about the best team in the league next. The best team? No, the worst team. team. Now we get to talk about the New England Chartreuse, coached by the one and only Joseph Mora. Um, and as always, I think we lead this off by saying zeros all around. Stu, what do you think? Absolute rubbish. <laughs> trash, trash as per usual. As per usual. Tradition. Dude, um, yeah. I can't seem to draft anything um, that even remotely resembles a team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> even with pick two, he just throws it out the window, you know? Absolute rubbish. Yeah. Garbage. Um, now, next team. <laughs> 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 All right, so, um, Joe, with Dragapult, Skarmory, Venusaur, Midday, Lycanroc, uh, Drapion, Cryogonal, Gastrodon, Vicavolt, Magma, and Grimmsnarl. Look, I think that's... You look at that and think, oof, that's, that's a finals contender. Um Having personally used Vicavolt in, in a draft that I'm in currently, Vicavolt is um, dis- is very deceptively bulky and it's hit deceptively hard. Um, He's a great bug. He's a great bug. The great bug. The goat of the. I bug. won't hear any tra- I won't hear any trash talk about Vicavolt. No, no, we won't be taking any further questions on the, um, the usability of Vicavolt. It's a very, it is a fantastic bug. Um, and then you got you know, Vicavolt with sticky webs and using Dragapult to clean up clean up teams. I think it's a um an excellent combination. Um where I think this team lacks a little bit is the usability like in the synergy. So if you look at Pokemon like Lycanroc and Venusaur, they, they kind of want weather, but there's a there's there's a distinct lack of it. Um in, that can just come in and set weather. Um, you know, Magma can set sun and Gastron can set sand, but do they? It's, I think I feel like it's a waste of a slot to try and do that. So I think, yeah. I think you need to make moves to um, make that happen. Um, but into the into the um, categories, categories themselves <laughs> for bulk. How do you how do you reckon? Well, I went with a solid eight on this one. I think any team that's got Skarmory in it is going to be a bit of a pain. Um, once again, just like the Tempests, 
it's not like the bulkiest team I've ever seen in my entire life, but like you say, Vicavol is deceptively bulky. Gastrodon's bulky. Um, Coragonal, I'm pretty sure, is especially bulky. Is that right? It's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Grimstar was bulky. I mean, that's what you need, right? Yeah. And they all have recovery too. So, like, there is a lot of bulk in the team. It is a good bulky team. It'll it, The team will hold together nicely. Um, but whether or not that can translate into um, three-point victories or one-point victories, again, is a, one of those, will, will it be three points? Will it be one point? I think. <laughs> It needs, needs a few weeks of um, settling, I think, before we can see, before we can actually make a final gift or... Before right. it happens. Um, so with speed, I think overall, it's not too bad. You've got sticky webs there, which really holds it together. And you've got um, priority in Lycanroc and Dragapult. But Dragapult doesn't need priority. Dragapult will be fast enough as it is. Um, I think again it'd be better if they had if you had access to weather. Um, and I think oh, in group star gets these priority gets priority screens as well, obviously too. Yeah. Um, oh, and Drake on gets sucker punch. So there's a lot of priority, and there's and there's not and there's fast options. But overall, I think it's sort of that that middle tier, which will get which will help will be healthy with webs. Um, so I think um, I think another thing as well. The spin blocking option is better than what we saw with Kiwi because you got Dragapult that comes in for the spin blocking and it, that's more of an offensive um, presence. So if you're expecting a spin, a rapid spin, you can bring in Dragapult and then really punch in. I also like that um, Joe's team isn't as affected by webs as a lot of teams you see could be. Um, yeah, like Dragapult's clear body, Scummery's in the air, um, you know, like in Rock Scott. Uh, priority if it needs it, that kind of thing. Um, Coronal rapid spins to get it all stuff away, you know, that kind of thing. Well, that means the speed. Well. Yeah, so the, the speed tiers are almost protected by the team. So yeah. there's almost, if the opponent has webs, you're like, eh, I'm not going to stress too much over that if they get them up. But of course, Skarmory is like reliable default McGee, so you know, it's not even going to worry about that. No, not at all. Um, but I think the speed overall, I'd, I'd give it a seven. Yeah, I gave it a seven too. And how do you feel about support? Support, I think support is where it's where it's going to be really good for Joe, because you've got spikes and stealth rock support in in um in support McGee Scarmory. McGee, <laughs> that's right. Support McGee Scarmory. Um, you got you got a lot of hazards in Scarmory. You've got Webs in Vicavolt, you got um, again, you got the the screens from Grim Snarl, status from Grim Snarl, just things. I could even come in with a Will O Wisp here and there. Um, does Drake get top of spikes? Sorry, yes, it does. does so, I think, yeah. so I think the support options are there, the support options are good, and I think you can see that you can switch into um, different mons as and when you need to. Um, so for that reason, I think probably a good at eight. Yeah, I was going with eight. Um, yeah, lots and lots of hazards, lots of removal. Guess on the sponges, things that aren't grass. Grim Snarl's got the biggest toolkit in the game. Can't go wrong. No, not at all. Um, I, think the, I think the only thing I would like to see <clears> that could boost the support rate a bit more is... Um, is that reliable weather support? Like, I, I can see, like, you know, Mike and Rock is in that tier three, which can Dynamax in, so he can set his own set, set his own sand. But I think you want something like a hip out on, hip out on, or a um, or even Hippopotamus at tier five. Just to get that. <laughs> Hippopotamus has already been drafted. In case you weren't aware, Hippopotamus, the lot, the yeah, the small one. Hippopotamus, the baby one, yeah, already yeah. been drafted. Oh, we'll see them shortly. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, All right, and um, wall breaking. Wall breaking. Look. <laughs> um, I mean, it's just Dragapult, really, isn't it? 
Well, I was Dragon just going to say, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to jump the gun, but all I see is Dragon Bolt. <laughs> I mean, Lycan Rock can patch its attack in, in Dynamax, but you don't really want to be relying just on Lycan Rock to be Dynamaxing week in, week out, because it's going to become, it'll become predictable. Um, Drapion, I mean, can Swords Dance and get Sucker Punches off for days. And that could, that's not too bad as well, but I just think that what Joe really lacks in this team is, uh, a better uh, is, an, is another wall breaker. He, Dragonfly can be physical or special, and with good prep, that can be that could just be enough to get through some teams. But I hate to say, but he's missing Char- he's missing Charizard. Yeah, I think that got taken by Dusty, didn't That's it? His favorite. Yeah, Dusty, Dusty took it. But... First pick, first That's... round. <laughs> you really did. <laughs> he went straight for it. Was... He said, "He said, I, I'm getting this one." <laughs> Classic. I was surprised that was Chancy. Was Chancy picked too? Oh, he picked Chancy as well. Yeah, he got Ch- I think you, you like, should see his team. I think that was like his third pick. Chancy. His team is his team is horrendous, in a good way, but it's horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think with Joe, um, I think with Joe's team, I think he needs another another wall breaker, like another established wall breaker. But even if it's a mixed attacker, like. Like if you have just a one mix that one good mixed attacker, you can still throw people off. Like it's the equivalent of having f- like four wall breakers because you don't know whether you're going to run two special, two physical, or a one special, one physical, or the other way around. Like it's anyone's guess with how yeah, those right. Pokemon are going to set up. Hundred percent. So um, uh, Joe gets a, a, a six for wall breaking from me. Yeah, six for me too. I think, I think that's pretty the lowest consistent. grade I've ever gotten in wall breaking in my life. I was very surprised that you drafted this team, Joe. Um, it's definitely different. I I usually expect more um, attackers from you. Yeah, hyper offense is normally my thing, but I tried to go pretty balanced this draft. Yeah, I think you've gone a little bit too balanced <laughs> on this one. I think you need a bit... <laughs> you've Fair overcorrected, enough. man. I think you need to go back to what you know. Get, get something... That hits hard. Fair enough. So what's your, to- what's your total there, Data? Well, we haven't done synergy yet. So what? Oh, I, I, I thought we'd... Oh, no, we didn't. You're right. My bad. My bad. That's right. My bad. The only reason why I know this is because I'm writing these as I go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so synergy, you know... Synergy's good. I actually really, really like the synergy it's, because you've got things the, that... Lack of weather. Well, yeah, lack of weather. But, like, if you look at even just the, the Pokemon that can be switched in at any given point, so you've got Skarmory that can, that's weak to an electric attack, but can be offset, like, because Gastron will just come in on those. Yeah, I, um, I drafted Venusaur for the bulk, not for the speed. Right. Ooh. Here comes Elite Seeds. <laughs> Damn right. Should have, should have gone Cradilly. Cradilly's so good. <laughs> um, the synergy, I think. It's, it's got to be um, seven. Like this, it's a good it's a good team that switches in nicely with each other. I just don't know that there's enough in it to like what they have is their, what they have is their team, and then they'll get chip off together. It'll be one of those teams that it doesn't look like there's like an established physical attack or an actual wall breaker, but they'll just do enough to be together to be able to, to win their games. Yeah, and in saying that, there's enough pieces in there that they can be traded away for replacements if need be. Yeah, absolutely. Five yeah. trades throughout the no, there's, season. There's plenty of room for trial and error, and especially over an eight-week season. So I went seven as well. Funny that. So 36, 72 out of... So we, we, we got the same scores, didn't we? Did we? Seven, seven, uh, six, eight, eight? Yep. 36 yep. is... Beautiful. So seventy two out of a possible one hundred. Hey, seventy two. I'll take it. That's the second half so far. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> you've done two. Oh, hey, that's, that's all I got to say. Hey, you know, I'm. I'm hey, you're you're right 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 right. Right. <laughs> all right. Man, so if I let's move on to the. Let's move right. on to the Sea of Cremorants by Scrub Supreme. You want to read it out? 
they drafted Draco's old Primarina, Hapaldon, Alolan Persian, Alolan Sandslash, Turfinator, Thwacky, Cantonian Weezing, Cramorant, and Galarian Slowbro. Bang. Bang. The, uh, just addressing the elephant in the room, the Draco's old Hapaldon, that's going to be tough to beat. Um, yeah, it's, it's a weather core. The weather, weather core. core. When you, you know what happens when you draft mons that use weather, and then you draft the weather. Mm. Yeah. Hey Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how about? It's just kidding. It was, it was a joke. It was a joke. Hey, hey. hey. How about just you shove that down. weather up your ass? <laughs> <laughs> was that a New Zealand accent? That's great. Right. It was. A, it was an accent of something. That's all I got to say. <laughs> All right, so how do we feel about speed, Stewie? Speed, well, honestly, it's a pretty slow team, apart from Drake's old understand. Well, Persian's I mean, fun. yeah, but I'm not going to give Mika points for Persian, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> what's that going to do? Not a lot. I mean, good, fast support, fake out. Um, it's got access to hypnosis. Um, if, I, if only he had... Um, you turn some kind of hail, hail setter for along the sand slash, then he'd be away laughing. They, I don't know which gender they are. I'm sorry, it was part I, of me. I'm very, I'm, what I'm really confused about is I wish that he'd drafted um Cantonian sand slash just because that they would take more advantage of the of the sand that hip powder would bring. Um, but I think I have a, I have a small problem with the number of physical attackers in his team. Um, you got Drake Result, you got sand slash. Um, Thwacky can be a physical attack, but I feel like it's going to be more of a. Um, I feel like that's going to be more of a support Pokemon. Like the, the grassy terrain is going to be there to help keep his team alive. Um, but the actual physical, the actual established attackers in these team are mostly physical. Turtonator can be both, but it's got access to that um, shell smash. So I feel like that'll be run more specially than physically. Um, and pre Marino is, is is not a bad special attacker, but I feel like it's probably more of a um, what is it? More of a defensive cleric kind of Pokemon where yeah. you just sort of hit it in and you get off skulls and stuff, and it'll get some good chip off and maybe get a burn here and there. Um, but I think his team is also pretty prone to getting to also getting hurt by burns. That's that's my yeah, opinion. Especially in a 6v6, 20 minute timer match, I think um, if you're bringing predominantly physical attackers and they all get burned, you're going to be in for a bad time. Yes. Uh, it's, not, it's, like, it's, not, it's not fatal he's had um, brought more physical attackers either. It's just uh, like my preference is that he'd probably drop maybe something, maybe um, Sand Slash for something special or like an established special attacker somewhere. Um, without looking at the tiers, I don't know what he's, what's available, but maybe look at something a bit more special attacking. In saying that, though, um, with the um, actually the other thing I wanted to talk about as well is I feel like Thwacky might also be like on the one hand it's going to be good for longevity in his team. On the other hand, it might also prevent him from winning games with using Sand because if he's yes. using, if he's relying on Earthquake and Earth Powers, those moves are going to be weakened. So I think that there's a, the synergy clashes a little bit. Um, again, not fatal, but it's something when you're planning, it's going to be something to plan around and it might, might um, cause you to be a bit less effective than what you'd want to be, otherwise be. Mm. So yeah, um, for speed, I gave it a six. I don't think it's meant to be fast, a fast team, but I don't know. There's something about it. It's just like, yeah. I think it's kind of like. I I think it's fine. I think it's okay. Like, there's enough there to patch and there's enough there to work in Trick Room if it needs to be there. Um, I gave it a seven. I think it's something that's fine. If this was a web team, it might be completely different, but that's another story. All right. So, if we move on to Bolt, what do you have? Um, I gave it a. an eight. I'm going to give it an eight for bulk. The slow bro is going to eat eat things. If it, it runs an assault vest set, like I know, 
Um, I've seen assault vest tests before on slow bro, glaring slow bro, and they work phenomenally. Um, but even if even if it doesn't run run assault vest, it'll still eat a lot of special attacks because it's slow. Oh, sorry, it's slow bro, not slow king. Sorry, um, it'll still eat those. It'll eat physical attacks for for days. It'll still eat physical. Just click calm mind. Attacks. Sorry. Just click calm. Just just click calm mind. Just click oh, calm mind. Can run assault vests, assault, assault vest set on slow bro. Um, if you want, if that way inclined, you can actually do those. It's, it makes him makes him very very bulky because he's already got that yeah. physical investment and adding that special investment along with regenerator access. It's just going to be a, a hard time to break it down. Um, but again, the same issue comes up. Does slow bro have enough to win games by itself? <sighs> Maybe. I don't think it can Dynamax, so I can't patch its special attack. Uh, I think Slowbro, a Glaring Slowbro is typically tier two, so I think it might be um, a little bit difficult to say that Slowbro will win games because of its, mm-hmm. because of its um, bulk on its own. And it's, um, but yeah, it would have won yeah. uh, and wouldn't back it, yeah. wouldn't write it off either. I go um, eight for bulk as well. Um, I think this team will probably have to run Primarina offensively more often than not, but Primarina can be very defensive. It needs to be um, about on very, very fat. Uh, Persian's got a lot of useful moves that can. Uh, I forget what's that ability. It's got fur coat. Is it fur coat? Yep. Yeah, fur coat. Yep. I think it's... doubles its defenses. Um, yep. Sand Slash has got it. Uh, you know, Steel is a good defensive typing. Too bad it's lost ice type as well, but um, Weezing, very, very thick too if you need it to get off some Wither Wisps or Pain Splits or anything like that. Yeah. And as you mentioned, slow, slow Bro, naturally bulky, and you can make it even more bulky, or if you want it to be more offensive, slap an Assault Vest on it, where you go. What I do like about that um, is that you have the Psychic Poison typing and you have the Water fairy typing like you haven't doubled he hasn't doubled up on typings there so if you're facing an electric type you, you could just go into hip out on because it's obviously the immunity but in circumstances where hip out on is down you got still can you're not really it's not electric type isn't overly problematic to you because you've not doubled up on those water typings so the drafting of Galarian Slowbro is actually quite good Yeah, especially when he's already got two water types, doesn't need a third one. No, definitely not, especially when Cramorant's four times weak to electric, too. Cramorant, eh? Cramorant. So um, I gave it eight for bulk, and then moving on to support, I also gave an eight. Um, once again, Persian, lots of useful moves. Thwacky can be useful with its grassy terrain, knockoff and everything available. Does it get knockoff? Yes, knockoff, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Weezing, um, Slowbro's got a bag of tricks too, and then um, you know Turnator can do a few things if it gets the opportunity. So, what do you reckon? I agree. I agree. No, I, I don't have any much more to add to that. Um, with wall breaking, I would say um, probably close to probably a eight as well, just because you got. Um, Turtonator, I've, I've had... I, you can't sleep on Turtonator in this. And I think you, even Cramorant, you don't want to sleep on Cramorant either. I think Cramorant can... I, I can't remember the sets, but I do remember sleeping on Cramorant once and getting absolutely obliterated with it. And it was, uh, it was a sad time. I've tried to repress it. Um, but I've seen Turtonator do extremely good things and very reliably too, um, with, especially if you can just... If you can get free set up on the White Herb with a white herb, with the shell smash, it, it's hard to stop in draft format. Um, I think you don't want to sleep on Terminator at all. Um, and then yeah, you've got... especially if it's in front, in front of something especially offensive, because it's very especially bulky, so it can take a lot of hits. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, if So say, for example, um, uh, if turn one in Cantonian Weezing, um, burn something and then you switch in to Ertonator or if you can just 
getting a favourable matchup, terminated is it, um, against a, a grass type, you've got, your opponent's going to switch out 99 times out of 100 on that, sw- on that. And then if you can get that free set up, then that's just going to be super handy to win games. It'll be very, very hard to stop from there. Um, yeah, eight for wall breaking. Um, and obviously, we don't need to talk about the Drake result. Um being great in the sand, like that, everyone knows that. Everyone knows that Drake Azolt will be super helpful in. Like, he will punch holes and things. Mm. But I, I think our, I think our job sort of, or well, I like to interpret our job is to see like what sets are there that can that might be used to, um, really make things great for this team. So I think I think Tottenham is going to really do good things. I agree. Yeah, I gave I gave a seven, um, a little bit less optimistic than you, but um, overall, there's enough there that teams are going to lose. So that's what you want. It's, if there's a team with no wall breakers whatsoever, that's when you're in trouble. But you know, between two and eight, direct result, slow bro, I guess Cramorant, you've got enough there. So it's a seven for me. Yep. Um, for synergy, I gave a six and. The reason why I gave it a six is I like I normally like giving higher scores for teams that utilize that have a weather setter and Pokemon that usually it utilizes the weather well. But like I said before, like at the very start, judgy, 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 judgy motherfucker. <laughs> I just like I don't know that Thwacky is going to be super helpful for that sand. Um, I just think that. It's gonna. There's gonna cause a lot of um, planning issues, and then you can plan around the planning issues. Like obviously, if you have the time, you can sit down and look at your opponent's team and say, "Okay, well, this is what I've got. This is, this is what I'm up against. Um, I don't necessarily need Earthquake, so I can run Thwacky in this situation here, um, and we can keep this team alive for longer." Otherwise, you can say, well, I really do need Earthquake, and you can just discard Thwacky entirely for that game. Um, so hey, I think... you don't... You could, you could bring um, Overgrowth Thwacky. <laughs> I mean, you could. I just don't know that it's, that's, that's necessarily better than, um, <laughs> than um, um, Grassy Surge. I think, I think if I like Thwacky will be, is going to be very, very strong but for bulk, and I think it's going to, you know, be helped to be like, it's going to help the team more with those, those leech seeds and the grassy terrains and all those status moves that it that it comes with. I just don't know that's going to really. Aside from the health ge- regeneration, I don't know that's going to actually. It might actually hinder that attacking, the, that wall breaking capacity. So yeah. I think it's sort of yeah. double edged. Yeah. That 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 uh that set other than grassy terrains are going to have to grow on them. Uh, 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 oh god uh, who invited you Joe <laughs> okay I'll see myself out I gave 7 but for all the same reasons that you just gave so maybe I was being too generous that doesn't happen very often um, generous too but yeah 7 so I ended up with 2 7s, 2 8s and a 6 16, 32 36, same as Joe. Wow, that was totally fortuitous. <laughs> well, I gave him 37, so one point above Joe and out of the... And we've um, put Joe into the uh, top three. Wow, look at that. Hey, still top, still in the top. That's all I got to say. Uh, so 73 out of 100. We'll see how much longer that lasts. Just goes to show that these teams, like these teams, are very close together. Like you, with ten Pokemon picked, like it's hard to mark anything in that five and four, like five or below. So I, I, since things cover off on each other, since those two are tied, um, uh, which one would you give the edge to? Um, which well, like five? I said, was I was I being too generous with my synergy? Because I can put my synergy to six, and that makes it thirty-five. Wait, so who let's, do that. Let's, let's, let's okay. do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Kiwi and... I'll make my synergy the same as yours. I would give the edge to Kiwi. Okay. Uh, Just because of that, like that, I think the synergy yeah. is better in Kiwi's team than it is in, in Scrub Supreme's team because look at the webs in, from Ribbon Beat and 
the, the capacity to be able to use it with Domain of Ten and Cinderace, I think it's just, and Neuven even, it's just going to be too. It'll be too much for most opponents. I think it'll it'll just be a way too hard of a thing to counter. Um, going into these battles, I, I would give the edge to Kiwi. All right, I'll have that reflected right. in the uh, what you... the rankings, and y'all can go to the next team. All right. Do you know what he's talking? We have the, the Crystal uh, Crowbats. All right. Crystal Crowbats. We've got Gyarados, Aerodactyl, Hatterene, Swoobat, Polyrath, Hippopotus, Stoutland, Toxtricity, Armaldo, and Ditto. And Holy Mother of Electric Weakness. All right, I was thinking the same thing, but we'll get to that when we get to synergy. But yep. to, to start to start with the speed tiers, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, Aerodactyl's yeah, really fast, Subat's really fast. It's pretty quick. That one's okay for Sand, I guess. Toxicity's fast. Aerodactyl was but... his first pick as well. Wow. So he got for it. Choice. And he actually picked up Gyarados pretty late, like mid draft. Okay. He was the last one to pick a tier one pick. I mean, when you get to that point, you, you when you get to the point of um being the last person to pick tier one, you may as well just keep going with your draft just because you know you want to get what you want in tier one. Um, the wild card was last still, correct? Is that right? So yeah, the wild card pick is last, so you can pick your still first. last. So you can literally pick your first tier pick and your wild card pick back to back. Right. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I don't know about uh, this team. Straight off the, you know, just looking at it. How do you feel about the bulk? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. Too sure. I think the bulk side of things, like Hatterene's good, especially defensively. Hippopotus, Hippop- I'm going to butcher this name every time, but Hippopotus... Um, Hippop Anonymous? You... <laughs> <Hey there. laughs> Pan- Panorama? <laughs> it's, it's a joke from Big Daddy. <laughs> oh, um, but I think Hippopotus and Amaldo and Hatterene, I think he's probably his three most bulky Pokemon. Um, you know, Ditto could probably get thrown in there as well, depending on what it um, transforms into. If you have the opportunity to transform into Ferrothorn, Toxapex, you know, any one of those established walls, you can probably make a case that it's better, that that will be super helpful to the team um, and provide that bulky support that comes with it, like, you know, providing rocks, providing toxic spikes whatever else it needs. Um, overall, though, I don't know that it's um, going to be... It's, I don't know that it's bulkier than anything else that we've seen so far. And I don't know that um, this team would be relying on its bulk to win games. Um, so I I totally would, agree. For that reason, I'd give it a six. I also gave it a six. Um also thinking about Gyarados potentially having Intimidate, that could be useful. But Joe, I had a, a gameplay question. So a lot of a lot of, a lot of leagues ban Ditto, obviously, because it's a little bit OP, depending on the situation. Mm-hmm. What happens if Ditto copies a Dynamax? Uh, Did, I, don't think, I think Ditto just it, copies does, the Pokemon itself. I don't think it, it Dynamaxes nah, right away. Uh, I'm, no, I'm pretty sure it copies the Max, doesn't it? No, no, it doesn't copy the Dynamax. It just copies the Pokemon. Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. Never mind then. <laughs> we're good, we're good. <laughs> it's all cool, it's all cool. Um, um, with the speed tiers, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm going to just uh, click away for a second. That was silly. Um, so the speed tiers, obviously, they're all over the place. Um You've got super fast Aerodactyl all the way down to super slow Hatterene. Um, you've got two swift swimmers, but no rain. I just don't. It's just a little bit of a bit of this, bit of that, and it doesn't really come together for me. 
Um, I gave it another six for speed. I know your was really fast and through bits really fast, but oh, I don't know. It's, 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 there's something about it. It doesn't flatten the boat, I'm afraid. No, that's fair enough. Um, I think one thing you, you've, you've sort of missed a little bit, or you didn't miss it, but probably, but um, one thing that should be mentioned is Ditto and the toy scarf aspect. I, oh, I think that's true. That'll, yes. that'll always be fast. Um, it'll be faster than whatever it's in front of it, than whatever is in front of it, because it will copy the stat changes and it will hit first. That's just how Ditto works. Um, I, I'm a big opponent of Ditto. I don't like Ditto as a as a choice, um, and that's just a personal opinion. I just I think it's a bit, in my in my opinion, I think it's cheap. Um, but it, it, that's not to say that. that <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not unviable. It's not it's a viable strategy to use Ditto to counter sweep teams. Like it's it's a completely legitimate and completely viable strategy to use Ditto. I just don't particularly like it as a strategy because it's I just think it doesn't come up with you can't come up with the creativity with it. It's sort of like gonna be, it'll be draft leagues. Do you think it'll be a kill leader? Hey. Do you think it'll be a kill leader? Let's say, let's say, is it going to be top five kills at the end of the regular season? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. I don't think so. I think, um, I think it'll be up there. I don't think it'll be top five, but I think that because I just think that there's too much good, too many good Pokemon in the um, that have been have been drafted that are established wall breakers that will be in the top five. But I could see Ditto, you know, transforming into Joe's um, Dragapult and really r- running rampant with it. Yeah, I'll bring, yeah. I'll bring, a, I'll bring a no move Dragapult. Try me. <laughs> <laughs> Just U turn, U turn only. One O U turn. Um, for Speedo, I would give it a seven, and I think. Um, oh, I think as well. Like you swear about with simple. Simple max air streams will get very fast very quickly. So I think it's, I think it's an accept. I think the the speed tiers are an acceptable level. Um, I think I, I take your point though that there's a lot of swift swimmers in there that don't have rain access. Um, I mean, Polyrath could set its own rain if it needed to, but I think again, you kind of want like I was saying about Joe's team. You need a you need a weather Pokemon. I think you'd want to get rid of this. Um, I don't even know that there's a Drizzle Pokemon in Tier 5, but you would want to try and move things around to be able to get a, um, a, a Rain Pokemon, and then you could really set things up nicely from there. I think you, you, you should have luck there. There's nothing in Tier 5 that sits Rain. Yeah, no. Yeah, didn't think so. I think... Um, Wingle. No, nah, Wingle doesn't uh, Wingle, get it. Wingle doesn't get Drizzle. Oh, yeah, he gets Hydration. Oh, never mind. Scratch that. Oh, that would be cool. And if, it, if anyone drafted Wingle, God, are you serious right now? Right. Uh, people <laughs> said that when I drafted Cotney, but Cotney was fantastic. Um, how do you how do you, how do you feel for support? Um, I think support overall though is um, not too bad. I think it's got you got good stealth rock options, Aerodactyl for Defog if he needs to, Hattery for Magic Bounce. Dude. I muted myself. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I thought I was off uh, for a second. No, I went to have a drink and I just forgot that I would muted myself. What an idiot. Um, yeah, I think support is okay. Aerodactyl is probably going to have to be the rocks lead. Sash every game. I don't know. What do you reckon? I think... No, I think you're probably right. I think Aerodactyl probably is the lead most games. I think Toxtricity... I think it's an item that Toxtricity will get make a lead every now and then. Um, well, it just... Uh, it is um, a funky team, and I think it'll be interesting. To see, I, I'm very keen to see how the Crystal Crobat's set up. I'm, like, I want to keep... I want to watch this person in particular just because I want to see what strategies they use to get this team in because I'm really interested to see how he's going to make this team work. Because I'm not really seeing too many particularly great options in there. Um, 
I think. Shift gear. Shift gear. Two words. <laughs> shift gear, yeah. It'll be shift gear. Shift gear. Shift gear toxicity, uh, maybe just got maybe a scarf <laughs> or a throat spray. Um, but yeah, I think he's. I think for support, I think you got to give it a seven. Yeah, I gave it a seven. That brings us to wall breaking. What's gonna What's gonna get all the kills here? Swoobat. 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 Wow. Well, hey. I said, wow. All right. All right. I think Swoobat. I think you're not gonna. You don't want to sleep on Swoobat. No one wants to sleep on Swoobat in this case because if he gets up a calm mind, uh, this is much, this is also dependent much like on. Um, I think it was Scrub Supreme and the Turtonator situation. If he gets a free calm mind and he gets a max, and then he maxes and max airstreams, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Like there's not much, it's not much on, there's not much on the uh, Narcissus Green Earth that's going to stop Swoobat once it's set up. Um, especially at, it would be plus six. Like it, it'd be plus two from, um, plus two special attack, plus two special defense plus two speed and whatever else it wants to do to set up, it can then, once it's finished its max sword power, its way to, to victory. Like the only thing that's going to step in its way is a dark type. And if he can, if he's got, he's got Hatterene there and Polyrath there. And even Stoutland with, um, with the fighting type moves, um, those two Pokemon, or those three Pokemon will be there to support Swoobat and to, into those um, victories, so I think the I think overall I think it's um, there's good wall breaking potential here. Um, Garros with Moxie and Aerodactyl naturally hits hard. I think overall I think it's actually not too bad. I would give it a mm. an eight for wall breaking. I gave it a solid eight for the same same reasons. Um, yeah, shift gear toxicity, Ditto doing Ditto things, set up Gyarados, Aerodactyl just tromping stuff. Pretty good. Hatterene can always usually set up something and get a few hits off. Get its trick trick room off. With Synergy, I would probably put Synergy at probably a six. Um, and again, with the same... We, we was going, I'm going to be touching on sort of the same point. I just think that this team has a lot of individual Pokemon that sort of don't really work together all that well. Um, with the exception of Hippodotus and Stalin, like those two Pokemon will be they they work together nicely. Um, I mean, Armaldo could get Armaldo and Aerodactyl both get the special defense boost with the sand. Does does that help overall? I, I'm not sh- entirely sure that it does, um, especially when they're both so f- frail. Aerodactyl is particularly frail. Um, and there's that the glaring electric weakness, which it helps by Hippopotus, but. Hippopotus, how running Hippopotus is has its own problems. Like it's a very passive Pokemon. You just bring yeah, it in. It and... It's not hip out on this for sure. No. It's um. Yeah. It's got I just 50 don't less attack. Yeah, than but... hip out on. That's right. That's right. I mean, it's just another team where I see lots of bits that could be traded away for better bits. Don't tell me what those bits are because I haven't looked at the sheet. But you know. Do you really need an older and polyrath? Mm. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where to. I think you probably want to get rid but of. I mean, uh... yeah, probably get rid like of. Like you um... say though, but I was gonna say probably I would probably move on Ditto, not because not only because I don't like it. I just think if you have like a, an established. Like you have you have a Pokemon that you can reliably see each week and say, okay, I'm going to bring in this particular fighting type or this particular water type or whatever else just to sort of hold it together a bit better, I think is that, it's, that would be um, a great start. But I think overall, I think synergy-wise... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I gave it a six. Um, yeah. Did I already say that? I probably already did. Mm-hmm. Can't remember what my train of thought was going to be. Oh, yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, set up Swoobat, set up Gyarados, whatever. Scary. Dragon Dance, Aerodactyl, scary, but yep. they're all set. They have to set. They have to set up first, and every turn that you need to set up is a turn that they can set up. So you better hope Ditto's in the back. Yeah, 
Crystal, what's your final score for this team? I gave 31. it 31. Oof. That's rugged. 31 and what? Nah. 34. 31 and 34. 65. 65 out of a possible 100. Not too bad. Not too bad. I'll give him worse. All right. Well, we have, we now have we move on to the Galveston Rilligoons, coached by Rilligoons. Now, who's Rilligoons? Do we know? Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I was about uh, to say, um, it's, it's the man who married a Rilligoon last summer. <laughs> Hey, so, uh, so I wonder why they haven't drafted Rillaboom here. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the goons have drafted. He drafted a side Garchomp instead. Yeah, Garchomp, Toxapex, Incineroar, Bronzong, Roton Frost, Talonflame, Galvantula, Lycanroc, Midnight, Eldegoss, and Metagross. His favorite. This is a. Uh... This is a David team thrown through, isn't it's it? Really, David team, mate. That's it is. ridiculous looking at it. You just look at it and you go, "What's this rubbish? What are you doing? Where, where are you? Uh, you're probably going to go like eight and zero and just destroy everyone." Yeah, he'll go. He'll he'll make finals, make it all the way to the grand final, pretty much undefeated, and then won't lose the final. That's probably how it'll go in classic David form. <laughs> the classic David form. Um, I would. It's a great team. There's no. Sugarcoating it. There's no like making anyone in the, other, in the other leagues, in the other um, in this division feel. There's, like, there's no way of sugarcoating it. Really, it's just it's a great team. Garchomp, fantastic. Big ice weakness, but fantastic. It, it, it's a well documented, fantastic Pokemon. Toxapex, uh, absolute wall. Incineroar, intimidating anything that comes in that that comes across its path. Can be specially defensive, can be extremely bulky, can be run as with a parting shot. Um, Garbantula with sticky webs, it, always fantastic. I think um, hard to stop, very hard to stop this this um, team from running away with it. Yeah, especially uh, it's just so bulky. <laughs> it's so bulky. It is incredibly bulky. I mean, Garchomp can be bulky, Toxapex is bulky, Incineroar is bulky, Bronzong is bulky. What more do you need, really? Elder Goss is what, bulky. What do you ask for for bulk? Ten. Nine. Nine. Elder Goss, that Elder Goss and Toxapex regenerator core is going to be absolutely crucial in keeping his whole team alive. Like, it's just, it is an incredibly bulky team. Like, it's going to be difficult to break it down. Like, you can't even really reliably run Toxic because Toxapex will just eat those. Like if he can, if he switches into Toxapex, it's just, it's a wasted move. Very true, very true. And what about um, speed tears? Probably a nine for speed. The Galvan Tula with sticky webs is is holding the speed. It, 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 that's the that's the the key for his speed. Like Garchomp, Scarf Chomp, um, Rotom Frost, Galvantula, and Metagross, and even Lycan Rock, they can be quick, but it, but it, it's helped more by the by that uh, sticky web. So I think actually, I think it's actually not that much. I mean, Talonflame's pretty quick, but actually, I probably yeah, I probably say an eight. I think I've got rose tinted glasses from the bulk, but I think overall the eight eight is probably more fair. Just because I think um, everything else has got that that medium high speed tier, and that is that it is helped mostly by that web. Yeah, I gave it an eight for the exact reason. <laughs> um, it doesn't need webs, but webs are obviously very very helpful for this team. Um, hmm. Metagross wouldn't. Metagross doesn't want to have to set up an agility every time, but we all know David. He loves his agility, Metagross. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. And he's not be, not able really to well, he's not able to Dynamax it this draft. So exactly. it'll be interesting to see how he runs it. because um, regular Metagross doesn't really want to take too many super effective hits to run that weakness policy. But yeah. Good stuff. Alright, um, so we move on to support. 
he's got good support. Um, depending on how he wants to set up on a given week, he could run a defensive Garchomp and run Stealth Rocks. Um, I feel like that would be a little bit counterintuitive, though. But um, the classic ones are Toxapex and Toxic Spikes, um, Baneful Bunker, um, Incineroar's Intimidate, Bronzong, Trick Room, Bronzong with Stealth Rock. I don't actually, I don't even know really you want to run too many Trick Rooms now I'm thinking about it out loud. Um, Galvantula with Sticky Webs. I think he's got a lot of support options. So I'd say eight. Yeah, I gave it a nine. I just, you know, Parting Shot and Cineroar is just the bane of my existence, really. Um, Eldegoss has got its fun things that it does. And um, even Talonflame can do like Tailwind and Will O Wisp and all that rubbish that flying types do. So, you know, all in all, pretty good, I think. Yeah, well, all you need to do is run heavy duty boots and you can guarantee a tailwind. Exactly right. You'd almost want to run Talonflame in front of a rock type just to make sure it gets one shot. So you can take the most yeah. advantage of the four ends of tailwind, or four turns of tailwind. Very true. All right. So how do you feel about the wall breaking? Or do I need to ask? <sighs> no, I don't need to ask that. It's just fantastic. Garchomp and Metagross is going to really... Well, yeah, Garchomp and Metagross are going to do wondrous things. Um, I think where it sort of falls down a little bit for me is the special attacking option. Again, like there's great attackers, great established... Like this is a... When you think of a draft, like this is the draft team that you, that you, that you want to make. This is very... As far as... Like I've been around drafts for a while now, and this is a very meta draft team like this is how it goes oh we keep calling him meta wow hey Stu, you, you, get, you get the rag <laughs> you get the rag for that the rag. rule all over Jason's face right now yeah guys can you just give me a moment with this thing please <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a very it's a very meta team though like you you have your webs you have your your physical attackers you have a couple of defensive pivots it's just how things run i think what i what i would like to see more of is more special attackers. You got Rodan Frost and Galvan Chula there, which yeah, they're both electric types and one has like uh, this you have ice and bug and electric as your three main special attacking options. I think but I think it would be better you'd be better off maybe not having bronze on there because I don't know you'd really want too many um you don't really want too many um trick rooms. So maybe he's using it for levitate. Yeah, I was going to say, he's getting, he's getting something off the ground because Metagross, Lycanroc, Incineroar, Toxapex all weak to ground. Mm. But, you know, in, in the Tier 3 option, he had, there's um, there was Noivern in Tier 3, so that could have just been just as good. Um, I'm not sure what else there is in Tier 3. I just remember that was um, something that was good in Tier 3. But he said it once, four times we die, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's also true. Um, I'm just having a quick look. I mean, there's there's Raichu, Alolan Raichu, um, but no, like strict terrain to make it really work. Um, I don't know. X Cloud, just something good, special, something special attacking, just to, just to make it, just for that option to, just for that option to um, to mix it up if you're running into physical walls. Yeah. I agree. I gave it an eight. I think I've, you know, it's not beyond David to run special Metagross or something or special Garchomp if he needs to. So, you know, like you say, it could be better, but you know, you're never going to get perfection. So I'd be pretty happy if I walked out with this team. It's very meta, isn't it, Stu? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll leave you with that comment. That's a quote from Jaden. Jaden Barr commented that. Um, how, how, how do you feel about synergy? Is going, I guess that's you already touched on it, but the synergy of the team for you, do you see it gelling together? Yes. Um, with Warbreak, I gave it a 9, but with the synergy, I'll also give it a 10, just because of how it works together as a team. It, I, I mean, I'll say it again. We'll do it again. It's a very meta team. works together well. It's, it works because things get lifted off the ground with Bronze on Rome Frost. Um, it you got very good switches in, very good switches. You got if you're worried about a burn for coming off the guard top, you've got Cinderall there to take your fire attack. Um, 
Oh, sorry. Um, if you're worried about an earthquake, you can jump into Bronzong. If you're worried about an ice attack, you've got Toxapex there. And even if it does get frozen, you, you can run Skulls and you can burn yourself out. It's it's a really, really strong team that really works together well. Like I, And like I said before, in um, the support category, Talonflame can run heavy-duty boots and get off a Tailwind and very easily get those um, mid to high level speed Pokemon very, very fast. I think and it's going to underestimate this underestimate the regenerator core. No, you can't I mean, he might he, he might bring Cotton down Eldegoss, maybe, or Merciless Toxapex, but all I see is two regenerator mons as always annoying. Yes. Good, but annoying. Um, I gave a nine for Sinistry. Yeah, so that's basically a 10 from Stu because no one ever gets perfection. Boy, Dan. Um, I, think, I think I like Rotom Frost for the um, for the Dynamax option as well. Um, yes. I feel, like, I feel like that could even like patch that wall-breaking option when I, when I was talking about having a special attacking option. Like That could help patch that otherwise sort of missing link for that special attack. Um, is is that that is a good option? Like Rotom Frost with the special physical, or special electric, and special ice is, would be helpful. All right, three nine to twenty seven plus sixteen. Thirty seven, forty seven, forty three. There, Joe. Oh, forty three. Forty four. And that's an eighty seven. Eighty seven out of a hundred. Skyrocketed. Smashed it. He is number one at the moment. I don't think uh, y'all go over any other team like that. So I think it's now, safe to say he holds that first place spot. I, well, you say that, but then we move on to this team, and the LA Nido Kings is another powerhouse. Oh yeah, that's it's of a Danny team. Mac. It's Danny Mac. It's Danny Mac. You know, yeah. just a really good drafter, super experienced, great coach. Yeah, have, 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 have oh, you heard of a, a threat. have you have you ever heard of a little uh, YouTuber called uh, Pokey Aim? You know, build teams together with Pokey Aim. You know, you're going to be up there, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, just oh, they're, they're in the same same division. Like the Kanto division is stacked, and this team is proof. I mean, look what he drafted: Dragonite, Azumarill, Weavile, Magnezone, Cantonian Sandslash, Torcat. Along the Marowak, Vileplume, Kangaskhan, Galarian Slowking. What a team. What, what a, a team. What a team. Do you want to leave you alone with this team, Stu? Mate, mate, this is not meta, <laughs> but it is so good. Taking turns <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait to the categories, but oh. yeah. all right. Let's get let's get let's get a hook right into it, mate. What do we got? Hold we on, got... hold on. Could this be the first team that gets a ten from Stu? Oh, the anticipation. Well, oh, I don't want to flood your basement just yet, but you know you gotta wait. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I'm I'm holding my bated breath. Holding my bated breath. Let's go. What do we got? We got bulk. To so, start with how do you Jayden, think? how do you go for bulk? How do you go for bulk, Jaden? How do you go for bulk? Yeah, how do you go for bulk? I would say it's a good eight. I, I like his bulk. Um, Dragonite with a Marvel scale, Slow King Galarian with with anything is going to be bulky. Um, <clears throat> and I think Magnezone can be a bit bulky too. Um, I like Vileplume. I think Vileplume is with Strength Sap could be really really strong too. Um, can stay has that st- that strong longevity in there that can really be useful. Um, yeah, I think not too bad as far as bulk goes, but I think that's not where this team particularly shines. I think it's in the other aspects, the wall breaking and the speed and the support is where it, where this team's going to be really good. I agree, but that's why I gave it a nine because even its offensive mons are bulky. Dragonite, bulky, even without multi-scale, still bulky. With multi-scale, crazy bulky. Azumarill can be bulky. Um, Magnazone, bulky ju- it's typing which helps. Torquette's got Intimidate. Um, you know, like you said, Slow King. Oh, come on. What are you doing to me here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right. Just, um, we've got... just, chuck, just slap a nine on it. Just slap a nine on it. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the eight because I'm just going to rub off. Oh, oh, Stuart, that's like off. waking up to your favorite type of tea in the morning. <laughs> I don't even like tea. I'm just going to put this out there. Daddy, if you get a 45 from Stu, just know that that is the best score that he's ever given because he's never given a 10 in this in this at all, ever. <laughs> all right. Now, speed. What have we got? Where did you go, Stu? Well, speed. Speed. Well, this is the one thing where I'm like, yeah, you know, average. I went with an eight, which I feel was generous, but... I don't know. I just think that, you know, it's not built, it's not a team, it's a bulky offense, obviously. It's not built to be super fast. It's not hit and run. Other than Weavile, of course. But you bring one of those scuffed every week, away you go. And oh. scuffing is like maybe... Now we like... figured out why this uh, team makes Stuart uh, quiver. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> it's bulky. It's bulky offense, and that's his favorite type of play style. Oh, it is. What's wrong with hey? What's wrong with bulky offense? Nothing's wrong. I'm just saying that's your favorite. That's why you love this team so much. Well, okay. Well, keep keep your thoughts to yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the team needs to, the team needs a save a To be honest, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> um, the classic Stu with save a lie. Um, I went I went eight as well for speed, and I, and I went eight for different reasons. I think. If you look at his slower Pokemon, you got Lola Marowak, you've got um, Sand Slash, and you've got. I mean, Azumarill is pretty slow. Um, it really relies on that Aqua Jet to really punch things. Um, after a Belly Dance, a Belly Drum, sorry. Belly Dance on my days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's on your mind? Oh, it's, dear. Um, it's, getting pretty, it's getting pretty late here. And um, yeah, anyway, uh, we'll keep it. We'll keep things. Um, and uh, smoking with the trick room <laughs> could be so useful for Alola Marowak. Um, it's definitely a viable option, 100%. 100%. Um, smoking, if, does it get access to teleport? I, ne- I can never remember. Of course it does. Of course it does. They all do. No, not smoking Galar. Really? Really? Are you, the are you serious? I, I just are you second. serious? It does are you access- serious? That's- yeah, very deadly serious. Doesn't get access that's to teleport, cool. but that, that's not a horrible thing though. Like it can still hard switch out. It would be, be I think it'd be better if it, would, if it had um, access to teleport for sure because you could yeah. have. Um, I'll never trust that. What a, what a load of trash that moments. <laughs> Disappointing. Um, I still like it because trick room and switching into all oh, Marowak is would be fantastic. Right, like having yeah, that yeah. having a lot of is a slow option, a slow physical attacker. It will it will hurt whoever's in front of it, and it looks like it can be because it's a, a free pick. It can be his Dynamax option too, and that is scary. Like that is very very scary, a very very scary prospect. Um, the only way I can say say this is going to be better is if he can teleport, if he can if he can get access to a, a sloking Johto, and and be in trick room teleport into Lola Marowak because that will bust things wide open. I can also see um, fighting shots coming off here. Getting, getting your mind on with the opponent being minus one, minus one. Mm. Wait, did you say sand slash? Um, party no, uh, tor- Torquet. Oh, Torquet. You, you can get your fighting shot off and then away you go. Right, yeah, yeah, that's also true. And you could reliably do that too with a buy light. Mm-hmm. And into yeah. a day. I think. Um, so, yes. All right. Well. How, yeah, how do you feel about support? Support? Support. Hey. I would say probably a seven for support. <laughs> I feel like I, mean, I feel like a seven is pretty generous too. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, what? Are, I mean, what's he? What support options do you see? I, I see toxic spikes from Vol- Vileplume. I don't see. I, I see sand, stealth rock from Sand Slash. I think it's sort of. It's sort of average in in support. Yeah, I can wear that. Yeah. 
I mean, soaking, trick room, uh, uh, I don't really see much more than the uh, magnezone with magnet pull. It can hold out uh, the steel types. Um, I mean, magnet pull's probably got a bit of a nerf in Gen 8 with, uh, with um, the removal of hidden power. But it still can do um, some pretty good. Still do <laughs> yeah. Pretty All good the things, things that Torahit can do. Oh, yeah, will always parting shot. I think it's just sort yeah, of you can't, when you compare you can't. When you compare the support options with other teams that we've seen and other teams that are in this division. I think it's just it's sort of no, it doesn't stand out. It's just it's a down the road middle kind of. It's a yeah, it's a that it. has, has a nice support options. You could bring um your favorite what? yawn or wish Kangaskhan. Does Kang does get wish? Of course, Kangas can't get wish. It's a it's one of the fat normal types that gets wish. Oh, I didn't know that until he told me uh, it got wish when he picked it up. So yuck. <laughs> yuck. Yeah, thank you, wish Kangas can Here we go. Here we go. Gonna make you come better. Anyway, um, what did you put for support? Um. Open eight, open eight. Um, like you say, there's nothing specific, but uh, I think when you cobble the team together, there's enough support options there to help it out. I don't think it's a team that's going to need rocks, um, as long as there's no rocks on their side of the field, which is the one thing that I think is lacking is a reliable remover. Well, I mean, I think, I think Sans- pretty sure Sand Slash gets um, rapid spin. Yeah, but you want to bring that every week? I don't know. Well, true. And I mean, there's, as we discussed previously, there's um, plenty of ghost options running around too, so spin blocking options are real. That's true. Um, moving on. Oh, you made me reset, uh, you're making me reset my grade. You made me feel like I'm going to do well. <laughs> That doesn't happen. I'm shooting that down your glasses, mate. Wall breaking, what do you think? Oh, uh, I don't want to go down. I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You don't want to go. Don't make me. Don't make me go down. Don't make me do it. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. No, I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stick. Synergy. No, no, no. It's wall breaking. Oh, wall break. Sorry, I was nearly skipped to the best category. Um. <laughs> yep. I can see nine being a reason reasonable score here. <clears throat> I think um, he's got very good options to to just like, he's got very good options that can come in then just either click a button or set up and just go um, Marowak needs a little bit of help getting in and busting things open with a with a trick room like Marowak can come in and take a hit it's not but I, I think um when you have a Pokemon as slow as Alola Marowak, you want to bring him in on a trick room just to make the most of his abilities. Um, having access to Rockhead and getting free Flare Blitzes is, is, is an unbelievable ability not to try and bring in trick room. And I think that's why Danny Mac has brought in that trick room, that trick room and Slow King. It's a very good option to for defend, defensively as well. But I think, yeah, he needs to recognise that. Or I think he has recognised that Marowak... Needs that little bit of extra support to, to come in and break open teams. And I think um, a lot of Marowak does patch that a lot. Even if he gets three turns into Trick Room, it's going to be very, very strong. Um, Dragon Knight, very yeah. strong. Asmeril Weavile, very strong. Um, does he have too many physical attackers? Probably. Um, he probably does. Sand, it looks like Sloking, prob- Sloking and Magnazone are his two main special attacking options. Um, with Magnazone probably being the most likely candidate for the Dynamax on special options. Um, potentially, probably could be made better by getting a, again, getting a special attacker, but who do you drop? The team is very good, though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I have wall breaking at 9-2. If you look down the list, everything does something, and to me, that's a strong team. And synergy. Well, find me a bit of Fairy Dragon Steel Core in this draft. A what? I mean, a bit of fairy Dragon. 
Find me a better Fury Dragon Steel Core in this draft. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> I mean. Hey yo! No, there's nothing that nothing that jumps out. No, I think oh, it's pretty good, I guess. Picking, picking out Grim Snarl <laughs> was pretty good, but um, I would probably still take Dragonite, Azumarill, Magnezone over those. But um. Yeah, I mean, the only downside is that there's two fire types, right? Well, that's not saying much, really. I think the I think the problem I think he will run into issues with rocks, um, because you you don't really want Dragonite to come in on rocks unless he's got heavy duty boots. You don't really I don't think you really want to run heavy duty boots each and every week. Um, so managing rock, like, it's not a fatal thing. Like it's something that you can be managed. Rapid spin, uh, maybe making a trade or two here and there to make things work. So get a special attacker or a defogger or something to. <clears throat> Sorry, um, get a special attacker or defogger to try and you know set things nicely for Dragonite to come in and sweep. Like that, like, it's not it's not a fatal thing. It's just a, a an observation that he needs to. Um, he'll need to manage that those rocks and I think he can I think um, Danny's a, a fine battler and um, he'll manage those rocks well <laughs> the thing is that um, Dragonite's yeah. almost a guaranteed Dragon dragon Dance if you're heavy, heavy duty boots so yeah. you just bring it in on whatever it's like Dragon Dance and then away you go yeah but so, I think the least, the least where you want to maybe run Choice Band Extreme Speed right like yeah also, I wouldn't be surprised a... to see Manuel, Manuel's son at some point. Does Kangas can't get Sunny Day? It probably does. It's a normal type. I would say so. Yes, it yeah. does. Sunny Day, so, sunny day not... Kangas can I mean, lots yeah. of potential there. I gave him a nine for Synergy. Um, like you say, not perfect. Can't be a ten. Nine is pretty good, though. Disappointing. I was really hoping for it, but then <laughs> I had you going there. I had you going there. You had to talk me down off that ledge. So, someone someday is going to score, and you're just going to have no choice but to give it to him. No, I scored the same as David. This is all your fault, Jaden. <laughs> 43. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, you know, I'm not too bad. At, I'll give a 10 where it's, where it's warranted. And Dave's bulky 10, 100%. He earned it. <laughs> so what is your score, Jaden? Uh, for Danny, um, 8, 7 is 15, 8 is, shit, um, 23, 31, 40, 40 out of fair possible 50. 40 plus 43 is 83. That's good. So jumped up That's there it. as well. This, like, no, we're gonna move on to this team. Will, this team will make finals. Like I have no doubt, Danny Mac will make will make finals. Like yes, he's he's too good a battler. He's so cluey with what he does. I think he's uh, he'll be absolutely fine making finals. Like this is this is a that is a finals team. Man, I put myself in the wrong division, man. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on to your favourite team, the uh, Day Day Knights, coached by the one and only Dusty Day Day Car. As I like to refer them to the Night Night Knights, because I've always put him down for a Night Night. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dusty drafted Zerka Tree, Chansey, Swampert, Charizard, Tyrantrum, Decidueye, Hitmontop, Araquanid, Gardevoir, and Centino. I actually quite like Centino. He's pronounced Cinchino. Yeah. Cinchino. yeah. I actually quite like Cinchino. It's um, good options for King's Rock, good options for um, Scarf. I think it's, uh, I've had problems with it in the past. It's a, um, it's a very funky Pokemon, and I'm here, and I'm here for it. Um, uh, this is a very dusty team. Um, I think... Um, yeah, you know, the, the Chansey and Charizard option is is a very dusty, and he knows what he's doing with them. Um, 
he's got a very reliable rack of spin on hip on top. Um, I think the only issue he really has is that these are the opposite problems of what a lot of folk, a lot of other coaches have, and he doesn't really have a very strong physical, um, a very strong physical wall breaker. Although he does occasion on occasion run a belly drum charge out set. So whether he runs that or not in this, as he's as his physical attacker, could do as a, especially as a. If he runs a Dynamax, is Gigantamax allowed? Is he allowed Gigantamax in this? No, 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 no Gigantamax, Gmax. only Dmax. Right. Um. Well, with we'll start with Bulk, and um, the ever present chance is obviously the the elephant in the room. Um, he got good uh, stat drops with Hitmon top, <clears throat> and um, Araquinid is something you don't want to sleep on. So I think he's, you know, as far as draft teams go, this is, it's about standard. I think, you know, you've got, when you think of, when you think of a draft team, you've only got 10 options for, or 10 Pokemon to draft. You, you pretty much just use three of your, I think it's pretty standard practice to have three Pokemon as your, as your defensive Pokemon, as your, designated as your, as your defensive. Yeah. So I think it's about right, about standard. Probably a clean seven is about where you want to be. Yeah, I've gone eight. Um, you know, Chansey and Swampert will probably come each every week. One of them will be a rocker. Um, a record it'll sit with set webs and then hit one top can rapid spin and stuff. So there are definitely defensive options abound. Is it super bulky? No. Oh, it's pretty bulky. It's not too bad. Like the, the bulky Pokemon that he's picked are good. Um does he have enough? Yeah, I think he does. I think I think it's like as like I'll say, like I said, like it's it's a pretty standard team. It's just it's um it's as far as both goes, it's it's about you know, he's, I've used it a lot tonight, but meta. It's very meta in terms of bulk. Like you just sort of have your three defensive Pokemon, and you sort of alternate which which Pokemon you're bringing each and every week. Can you run Wish and Teleport on Chansey? Or is that a banned combo? I can't remember. I don't know, actually. I think you can run both. I know. I think you can on Showdown, but I don't know that you can on Switch. So on Switch, you should be able to, because uh, I know um, certain sets with Clefable, you can't run Soft Boiled on Showdown, but you can still run it on Wi-Fi. Yeah. I'm going to just test it. Can't see. Yeah, you can't use Wish and Teleport. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so, yeah, I guess what it comes down to for Dusty is managing the de- – not getting too defensive, not just bringing Chansey and just walling stuff and it going to time every match, which I guess is always the risk in a 20-minute Wi-Fi battle. Oof, um, All right. What about speed? Speed is, yeah, so – you know, as always, webs always are going to help. But um, even without webs, this team is reasonable without being incredibly fast. I mean, is, you know, Charizard and Gardevoir up the top there, like, Chinchino is pretty fast. Interesting wild card pick, as you mentioned. Um, but for, for Mons like Zerpatry to shine, you really need those webs up. So it'll be interesting to see how he manipulates a game, how, where he sees his wincon being, and which mons he brings to support that win con because there's nothing that goes, I'm going to win the game for you every week, which is probably a good thing. It makes it hard for teams to build against, but overall, you, you know where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think something that, that people do sleep on a lot is a blunder policy circuitry. I think um, with the such low accuracy on hypnosis, you can't lose... On a, on a blunder policy circuitry, you either hit the hypnosis, in which case you're free to tail blow. And if you if you got, got webs yeah. up, that's even better. But if you miss the hypnosis, you get two times speed. Like, you can't you can't lose with that. Um, it's true. Like, like no matter whether it hits or not, you're you're absolutely fine to just hit that hypnosis and just go with whatever happens after that. Um, so I think that's a really good patch. Um, that sometimes so what, what number did you did you land on for that? 
Um, for speed, I, I would give him a seven still. Um, I think there's, like you said, there's there's some good speed options in the when Webb's help, but I think again, it's sort of there's not many options there that he can run with week in week out. It will just out, generally outspeed things on its own. Yeah, I went with seven as well for that. Pretty much, if he didn't have Webb, it'd be a bit lower, but he has Webb, so seven sounds good to me. And wall breaking. So. <laughs> oh, we're changing the order for this one. Okay then. Oh, oh no, no. All got, I just yeah. Sometimes I've got the, I've got it written down as wall breaking, bulk speed, sports That's fine. Energy. Haven't. That's actually... fine. We can do we we can do wall breaking. As sure. you mentioned, Zerk Tree is a beast and sets up. Um, must have been taping to draft Pinkurchin to get that electric terrain boost, but uh, you know, Tarantrum pretty heavy. Charizard, we know what Charizard does. It's probably the best tier three. That's why he drafted it. Round one. Probably. Getting a good um, Dynamaxer is not a, nothing to be um, nothing to be ashamed of. He's just going straight for tier three it, and getting that great Dynamax option. Something that he, it's a comfort pick for him. He knows what it does. He knows what it can live, what it can't. I think it's absolutely commendable to go for straight for a tier three that he knows. Um, yeah, especially when you know Joey would draft it otherwise, so got to give him that. <laughs> I'd give ball breaking an eight. I think it's a it's on the higher side of good. Yes, I went with eight. Um, what was I going to mention? Oh, don't don't sli- don't sleep on head smash Tarantrum. That's all. Mm. Oh, I thought you were going to mention Dolly Drum Charizard. Uh, not talking about that. We don't talk about that thing. We don't. <laughs> I've locked it away in the, in the deep recesses of my brain. <laughs> um, how do you feel about support? Well, you know, it's hard to argue with Chansey and Swampert and I'm on top and a record nerd, but um, there's nothing that screams, I'm I'm a support mom other than Chansey. So, you know, I had to give it a, a seven middle of the road kind of deal. I would I would be happy with a seven as well. Um Araquanid is good. Um Araquanid can be that web I think chance he can be um he can provide the support for Heal Bell or Aromatherapy or whatever else and keep the status away from the team. I think that'll be you know, that'll be great. But we also again gotta remember that it's a switch league, it's not a showdown league, so um those twenty minute timers will come will come very fast and I think exactly right. And I think that that's a big difference. Like, it's a huge difference between the showdown league and the, and the switch league. The switch league, you need to be thinking more offensively if you want to try and make finals and, and make those um, and actually win the win the title. Um, you need to be a bit yeah, more you offensive. Have, yeah, <clears throat> I agree. You, you, support Pokemon need to be the right type of support Pokemon. They can't just be passively reducing um, status conditions. It needs to be lowering, like lowering their speed or... Um, Causing damage to the opponent um, with yeah. spikes. Nothing before. worse. Nothing worse than sitting in front of Wish Protect. You know, nothing worse. Nothing worse. It, it's got to be. Um, it's, so it's how, how do you go with Synergy overall? <clears throat> Synergy, I think, is he's got a good team. Um, it's a. I think it's a. It's a dusty team, right? Like, it's a um, something that we've grown to know. I think overall, I think this is one of those. It's a middle of the road kind of teams. Like it's not a, it's not a fantastic team. I've seen Dusty draft better teams. I've seen Dusty draft worse teams. I think this is a very Dusty team. I think it's very down the middle. I think sevens all round is, yep. with the exception of wall breaking with an eight. I think that's about right. Yeah, he, um, he's lacking a steel type, which is probably the one one thing that I'd go. Oh, but other than that. Seven is a fair score, and I went with uh, overall three sevens and two eights, so that'll be um, thirty-seven. Seven thirty-five. That must be thirty-seven. Yeah. I, had, um, I counted mine up. I had four sevens and an eight, and got thirty-six. That's 37 easy. Plus thirty-six seventy-three. That's cool, Dusty. Better than mine. Once again, a coach that's you know able to make the most of a team. But I'm trying to do it from an objective perspective. Mm. And then yeah. final, final team for the Kanto division. 
We've got the New Orleans Infernapes, coached by Melvin, 1991. And he drafted Mimikyu, Ferrothorn, Mamoswine, Gudra, Jellicent, Draclok, Magmortar, Hitmonchan, Scyther, and Togekiss. How'd you go with Bulk on that one, Jaden? I quite like the Bulk in this. Um, I gave it an 8. And I think, um, like, it's it's good. Be- I, th- I think I like it because it falls away from the traditionally bulky Pokemon. Like, you've got Mimikyu there, which can take a hit. Like, it's, it's like one free. It's, the first one's free, and you can do whatever you want. Um, Jellison is always bulky, and can, is good at taking out those. Like, it's good for um, those water attacks. Good draw, good for Sap Sipper, good is is naturally bulky, Mammoth Swine with the thick fat. Um, and Ferrothorn is a is a great defensive Pokemon. I think you can really knock mm. oh, and Toe Kiss oh, I just saw that down the bottom there. And there's just a really, really good, well put together team. Nippon Chan has got great special defense. Actually I'll probably push this up one further and say say a nine for bulk. <clears throat> um it's very bulky. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, I went for eight, mostly because, you know, I'm on like Gudra can be offensive, but it's bulky. Mimikyu, as you say, takes a hit. Mamoswine, you can be surprisingly fat considering it's typing. Um, Magmorta can take a hit as long as it's nothing super effective. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I went with eight. How'd you go um, for the speed tiers? What'd you see? With speed, I think, um, I think it's probably fair to say a seven for speed. Um, you've got a couple of good, you know, Draclok and Mimikyu. You've got those Shadow Sneaks. Uh, Mammoth Slime with Ice Shard. Hitmonchan with Mac Punch. Um, Togekiss could get off the Tailwind if it really needed to. Um, I don't know that. Again, I just I don't think in singles it's a particularly great move in singles um, or a good slot to use. Oh, it's a good, I think it's a, it's a waste of a, possibly a waste of a move in singles. Um, I also know that I think Tailwind utilised particularly well in this generation because of that timer. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it, yeah, I, I went. Yeah, I went with a seven. Sorry to interrupt. I, I went with a seven. I had a six, but then I remembered that you know, Mimikyu Trick Room is a is a thing, right? It's a thing. You can bring yeah. offensive Ferrothorn under Trick Room if you wanted to, or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, just thinking outside the box here. Yeah, that's also true. He's got a, he's got that trick room option in Mimikyu, um, and they can all be run quite slow too. So <coughs> I think overall, uh, it's not too bad. Um, I think probably an eight is probably the way to go. Nice. All right. So let's move on to support. I gave it a um, seven. Um, I see lots of things that do something, but I don't see one like real Swiss Army knife that was a lot of things apart from Ferrothorn but um, you know you can't expect Ferro to carry everything I can't it's going to have four move slot, move slot syndrome every week well, I suppose, yeah I suppose it depends on how you want to do things right like he, he, he's obviously missing a Weber so I think Thunder Waves will probably be the, the name of the day and he's got two two very reliable ones in Ferrothorn and Togekiss they can really provide those Thunder Waves really well. Um, even Draclok might run something like Will O' Wisp or Thunder Wave as well. Um, you know, those are, those are all, I think even, oh, sorry, uh, I think even Jellison even has Thunder Wave ca- capacity. So I think he's got a lot of options yeah. for, for support. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, jigging things around each week to make sure it works. So I gave him an eight for support. I think he's got, you know, he's got the natural ones like Ferrothorn with Spikes and, St- and Stealth Rock. And leech seed and like the general shithousery that Ferrothorn brings, um, but as well, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Cypher with heavy duty boots could also run defog, um, and that could that could free up a slot for Toby Kiss to, to True. provide, provide True. the way. So I think he's got options there. It's just a matter of making sure that he's planned it out, planned out his um strategy for the week. So that leaves you with your favorite category of wall breaking. I love wall breaking. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first thing I always look for whenever I'm whenever I'm analysing a team. Um, but I think this in this case, I think it, 
he's got Mimikyu and Toe Kiss. Um, sorry, maybe so not Toe Kiss. Toe Kiss doesn't really wall break that well, but Mimikyu and Gudra um, is the is probably where you're looking for those. Um, that's where you're looking for wall breaking in this team. I'm not sure that necessarily that will be enough to um, help. I'm not sure if that'll be enough to wall break of in and of itself. I think there's two strong wall breakers, mm. maybe Q and Gudra, in this division. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think he's going to have to bring offensive members one more often than not to uh, really punch holes in things. Um, you know, maybe a Specs Meg Mortar or something like that. Uh, yeah, as you say, you can't just bring defensive Kotogikis because you need those four move slots, so you're going to have to bring offensive sometimes. It'll be interesting um, to see. I was going to say, like, you make a good point with Specs Meg Mortar. Um, even if he runs Life Orb and Dynamax is Meg Mortar, you can, it's true. Like, you could Dynamax late and use Togekiss and Ferrothorn as the as Thunder Wave um, options. Like just make sure that everything is slower than Mag Mortar. So run Timid Specs or something. And it was Timid yeah. Life really just focus on that late game sweep. Um, so I think he, I think he's got it there. Like he's got the parts that just moving things around each week. I think it'll be like, it'll be a week by week kind of deal. And it'll work. I think it'll work most weeks. I think, but I don't know that it, I think it will be um, consistent. Whether he was able to do it consistently will be the issue. So I think I expect Melbourne to do well in this draft, in this division. I don't know that necessarily he'll make the top three. Is it top three that makes the finals or is it top four? Top four. Top four. Top four. I think if he makes it, it'll be it'll be in that fourth slot. It'll be he'll be cutting in that that four. So you landed on a seven, did you? Is that what you said? Yeah, seven for wall break. Yeah, I landed on a seven. And then finally, the last category for the Kanto division, we have the synergy for the Inferno Apes. Um, you know, once again, a really good Fairy Dragon Steel Core can't go wrong there. Um, to, you know, Jellison's a great water type. Double ghost typing is not that that critical though. Uh, he's got triple ghost um, type. He's got mimic you, Jellison. He... Oh, and Drexloak. I don't talk about Drexloak. Oh. It's got nothing going for it. I mean, it has no business being 102 speed, right? But other than that, there's nothing going. <laughs> yeah, look, I think you're probably right in saying that Drexloak probably won't come in, like, won't make an appearance very often, if at all. Um, I would like to see it. I'd like to see new Pokemon make the make its name, make the name on the on the big stage. Um, I remember bringing being the first to bring Tangler into the into the fold and doing quite well with Tangler. Um, and also with Cottony, I did well with Cottony too. Um, I like seeing yes. those low level tier fives get a get a good run. I like an underdog. Um, I, I just don't know that great track like will do that. Um, week in week out, it probably has mm. some. Good sets though, so I'd be keen to see it. Um, it's just yeah, it's just so offensively weak. It's just fast, so and it's going to get something fast with a wisp or something off. I guess to get with a wisp, a fast T wave maybe, possibly yeah. Yeah. Um, so I went with I went with eight over synergy. You know, I think it's it's pretty good. I went with a seven. I think that it's hard to look past the treble ghost weakness. I think it invites ghost and dark type moves. Um, I mean, you can bring in Mimikyu and Togekiss with the double fairy as well, but you know, Steel and Ghost and Dark are pretty, pretty common. That's, that's probably what you're going <clears> to <throat> lot of. Um, so. I guess it depends on what you're being attacked with, though, because um, if you're being hit by something physical, then Jellicent's always got the opportunity to curse body it. And that's true. And I suppose that Jellison as well has that recovery option too. So maybe you re- you rely on Jellison to take those hits, um, and again, especially against those physical attackers, like you say. But I think yeah. I seven. I still think seven. Um, it's one of those cool. middle of the road kind of good draft teams. It's just sort of it, it does enough to be. It has the pieces there to be able to work to get them well. It's funny you should say that because I gave it exactly the same score as I gave the um, Dusty the team before. <laughs> um, 37. 
Uh, 25, 34, 41, I gave it. 41 plus 7. Nice. Nice. 78. Yeah, 78. Nice one, Melvin. Pretty good. Yeah, it's a good team. It's a good team. It's a good I like it. Um, It was. uh, What's his name again? David. That's him. <laughs> David's got the highest score. That... So what is the high scores in this in these division? So we've got David the highest, then we got um Yeah, it's David uh it's Danny Mac, then Melvin, then a three way tie between Tempest, Cramorants, Neat and uh, Knights. Oh Tartriots and then Grobecks. In the three way tie for right fourth now. place. Nice. That's what you want. That is a very good. That is a very good score spread. This yeah. is a very. This is a very tough division. This is probably one of the toughest I've seen in PML. So, good luck to the Kanto division participants. It's been a pleasure. Oh yeah, then that is part one. Uh, we will have part two up shortly, and we will get to go over the Galar division soon. So thank you guys for watching. Cheers, Jaden. See you guys next time. Yes, yeah, see you soon. Later, guys. Shoot.